And now for our weekly news segment. Our news section today is June 24th, which is the first day of MoneraCon. So at the end of the video, you're going to see a couple of pictures. Uh, don't miss the art there right now. This year, it's going to be in Prague. And that's very, very uh, cool and exciting. So uh, besides that, we have a lot of big uh, news when it comes to Monero. Uh, the first thing that I want to discuss is interesting. So a Russian man donated to the Ukrainian army fund in ordinary uh, crypto, right? So maybe Bitcoin or something like that. And he's <laughs> um, he has been caught and uh, he's now arrested by the FSB RU, which is Russian Secret Torture Service, according to uh, this person's translation. And he faces 25 years in jail for treason. So um, what I want to emph emphasize with this is basically that if he had use Monero, then nobody would have known that transaction existed. Nobody would have, would have known that um, he even made that uh, transaction and then he would not have been in jail right now. So um, just it just shows that you need privacy in, in the currency um, and it shows where it fails when you have a uh, transparent blockchain. So uh, yeah, another thing in which Monero is superior is uh, the fees. So the fees are very, very low for the people that don't know. And I got this from Reddit. Someone on Reddit uh, posted this and uh, the person made it. Um, so it shows uh, Monero's average fees versus Bitcoin's average fee. So in Monero, it's 0 0.001 average fee, which is nothing. Right? It's, it's very, very low. It's, uh, it's nothing. And, but in Bitcoin, it's $5. That's the average fee, which is really high. Uh, for just a, a fee for transacting. And then we have a chart uh, for since last year to today, and it shows kind of where we are. Uh, narrow, low fees at all times, you know, 0, 0.0 something. And then Bitcoin is almost always over a dollar. Uh, one time it was even $31 on uh, just and not too long ago. So, but Monero was still at 0 0.05. So it also shows that Monero is superior in, in the fees because the more it's used, actually, the lower the, the fees due to Monero architecture. architecture. And uh, it matters when it comes to to spending this currency. And uh, if the if the person that you want to transact with doesn't accept Monero directly, what you can do is you can go on Cake Wallet and you can use Cake Pay and you can get a gift card for your Monero and then you can pay for your service this way. And they just added Burger King um, to their 200 plus vendor list in Cake Pay. So yeah, go ahead and, and use that. Now, next thing that I want to bring up, oh, just <laughs> back to Cake, Cake Wallet actually, they had an update uh, four days ago, 4.6.7. So make sure you update that and Monero.com is 1.3.8. Um, updates in iPad, table UI, so uh, there's a new layout for the iPad and tablets, site shift updating fixes, improved MoonPay cell, bug fixes, and many other things. So make sure that you update to the newest version of uh, Cake Wallet. Uh, next, we have something from um, my our team members, uh, Digun, which is, a, I mean, she does an excellent job. And uh, this is a very, very cool uh, service that he just released. So. Uh, he recently launched Phantom Phone, which is an anonymous phone number verification service. He said, Phantom Phone gives you a phone number for services that require it, such as Signal, Telegram, Tinder, etc. And he offers short and long-term rental numbers. If you want to test the service, a free public number is on the landing page. Uh, it, it is less secure, he says, than having a physical burner phone, but it's cheaper and more convenient. Um, if you want a good deal on an anonymous burner phone, uh, my other service, Anon Shop, which you should check out, lets you get better deals on burner phone, phones than physical stores offer. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions about this, make sure that you reach out to him. The website is very beautiful, of course. Um, mm -hmm. This is very particular when it comes to, to style, and his Twitter is aesthetic. His posts are very aesthetically pleasing as well. Um, beautiful website, and... Yeah, make sure you you check it out. That's uh, that's really cool. Um, now, next thing, Monero OS. This is a bit more technical, but someone made someone has been playing with Nice Hash OS, and he said the person said or she maybe uh, it seems fairly good except for the fact that it is custodial prop, uh, proprietary and may need KYC. 
So the person thought that he could or she could create something like that for Monero. So Monero OS came into existence. And for more details, make sure that you go on, on the links and uh, look on the GitHub and um, play with it if you want. Uh, Mulvad, now Mulvad has been accepted in Monero for a long time. Uh, this is not something new, but I saw it pop up on, on Reddit again. Um, so just as a, as a reminder, if you want a VPN provider, Mulvad does accept Monero. And if you like Mulvad, then pay Monero and you're going to have a VPN. Uh, now, for our team, we are looking to hire a UX UI designer. So if you're interested, make sure that you email us at monero.com. At uh, yeah, we do need help. It's always needed. So make sure that you read the description and uh, join the team. That'll be cool. Next, a um, bit of CBDC. So we have two articles <laughs> which are kind of opposing. Uh, one is Slovakia, um, which this is very nice to see. And uh, I don't think it's surprising. I think it's Slovenia or Slovakia. No, Slovakia, I think, um, is very crypto friendly. So they passed uh, in its constitution um, the right of its citizens to pay for goods and services with cash, right? because they're fearful of the digital euro. They're quite aware, aware of what could happen. Um, so Slovakia's financial sovereignty said, it is very important that there is a provision in the constitution based on which we can defend ourselves in the future against any orders from the outside, saying that there can be can only be digital euro and no other payment options. Also protects shopkeepers, you know, if they want to refuse cash, of course, um, if they choose to do that, they, they can. So it protects them as well, uh, maybe against robberies, exposure to germs, but a lot of things have germs. That's not, I mean, money is disgusting in itself, you know, because everybody touches and stuff like that, but whatever. I and mean, we touch a lot of other things. Just wash your hands after when you get home. Uh, but yeah, uh, robberies and things like that. So the shopkeeper, for some reason, does not want to accept uh, cash and wants to pay the exorbitant <laughs> fees from Visa and all the other people, which is 3% and up. American Express is like 7%, uh, right? So they can choose to do that. Uh, and yeah, so very good to see from, from Slovakia protecting themselves from what is coming. And it is coming because in the US, we've seen some articles in the past few sections where they say, oh, we were thinking about the CBDC. We're not sure if it's going to come. We're doing a lot of research, putting a lot of money, but maybe it's not going to come. We have CBDCs in, in some countries. And I think last new section, we had an article on it. But look at France. So the French central banker said, uh, Francois Villeroy de Gaho. Sorry if I didn't say that uh, correctly, but he tried to soft sell the proposed Euro CBDC to commercial bankers, emphasizing collaboration and the CBDC's advantages. Um, and in the article, he says that it's kind of like um, the Euro will be a digital banknote or cash plus, right? So the cash plus is a very interesting way of, of, um, of putting it because it's like cash, but it's plus. It has it's better, right? It's an improved version of cash. Uh, that's their selling point. Of course, we don't know. A lot of people don't know what is going to come with. A lot of bad stuff. Um, but they said, we central banks have absolutely no intention to open private accounts. Um, yeah, so interesting kind of two opposing um, views coming from Slovakia versus French. Of course, this is just one central banker. There's probably people in France, of course. 100% in the from the political realm that are opposing CBDCs and are aware of them. I'm not sure what, how many of them, but um, we should see. Uh, yeah, the Slovakia um, uh, rule has been passed. So it's in the constitution. I'm not sure when it's going to go in the constitution, but yeah, it has been passed. passed. Uh, now, last things that we uh, are going to discuss for today is MoneroCon. It's a very special time of the year. MoneroCon, we had MoneroTopia not too long ago, like a month ago. Now we have MoneroCon, uh, which is in Czech Republic in Prague. So, uh, yeah, make sure that you go on the live stream, check it out, right? You can tune in with them. Then we have a dog is there, Sunita is there, and they bought a lot. It brought a lot of, of um, gratuitous coffee. So make sure you spend your Monero, buy some coffee uh, from us. And if you go on, oops, but I had to pull up Monero Con, let's type that, okay. 
Um, yeah, people are already in, in in Prague, of course. This is day one. It's very exciting. There's lots of pictures on, on Twitter. So if you don't have Twitter, go on Twitter. Or even if you don't have Twitter, just go on Twitter and check out the pictures from the Monerocon page. I can buy stickers, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so yeah, very cool time. Um, Naruto t-shirt over here. Um, yeah, it's going to be a very, very good time for the people that are attending. Hopefully next year I can attend it. I'll be in Europe in like one month. Couldn't make it to Prague, fortunately, but what can we do? Uh, guys, this was this week's news um, section. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next week with uh, more exciting things. And have a good week.